All right, Sean Walker here again. Thank you guys for all the views that I've been getting, quite honestly. I'm not really doing this much for the views. I'm doing this just for the fun of, you know, enjoying Magic the Gathering. But I have been getting a decent amount of feedback. And I have had a couple people, you know, reach out to me on a consistent basis just to look at my ID and see if there's anything they would improve on. The main things that I have been getting so far is that I need to put more copies of certain planeswalkers in the deck. That way I am able to fully understand exactly how the deck will work every time I do play it. What I mean by that is before I had even though I, you know, own a lot of planeswalkers, I only had one copy of a majority of them in. And because I only had one copy of a majority of them in, it was honestly kind of hit and miss even though you know doubling season plus any of the planeswalkers I have in pretty much ends the game I'm still not able to 100% expect you know Liliana every single game just because I have one copy of her but while I do only have one copy of her I have 18 filter cards in the deck the newest addition to those filter cards being Ancient Stirrings, and the reason why I put this card in the deck is because I want to be able to go ahead and hit my Tron lands on turn 3 as often as possible. And so far since adding these cards in, I have pretty much been able to hit Tron within 3 turns, I'd say 80% of the time, if not more than that, just because I do have so many filter cards. I have gone ahead and taken out some of the navigator's compasses. The reason for that is I'm not sure I own very many copies of cards and of this card in real life. So since I'm trying to play a deck that I do actually own, I just limit it to one right now because I do believe it's a very cheap card anyways. So, you know, I'm gonna pick up a couple copies of it just to, you know, add to my collection for things that I can use later on and terrarian the reason for the terrarian addition is because it sets mana and whenever it leaves the battlefield i get to draw a card which means that it's a filter card as well i have had opponents destroy this you know probably with the intention of trying to get rid of it before it adds the mana and i get to draw a card but then i still do get the draw card which is an excellent trade-off in my book Besides that, I have gone ahead and added another copy of Jace Architect of Thought. And like I discussed before, it's because of the fact that I get to ultimate it, search for something from my deck and my opponent's deck. So if they're playing anything decent and they do have certain strong specific cards, I can go ahead and use those cards against them and see how it plays out. I have also added another copy of Doubling Season because... I realize that I tend to end up needing this card and because I only ran three copies of it before sometimes I would miss it or not be able to get to it quick enough. The Razarik. This is an amazing card but quite honestly it's a fun planeswalker. Because you know you have to flip coins to see how many extra turns you get and then within those turns you have to find out how to win the game. Otherwise Typically, you're at that point in the game where you're going to lose if you can't figure something out really quick. I might take this guy out, but quite honestly, I love playing with him just because of the fact that he can deal 3 damage to something. He can tap a permanent and then untap a permanent, which means that I'm tapping something random on the board that's irrelevant. And then I'm going to untap my... Urza's Tower, which gives me an extra 3 mana. So, a majority of the time when I do cast this guy, if I can cast him and then on top of Urza's Tower, I just cast it at him for free. Because it only cost, what, it only costed me 1 mana to play him, which, hey, I've had occasions where I've had to tap, let's say, a Dampening Sphere, and then on top of land, that way I could go ahead and cast Nahiri 
to exile that dampening sphere, which, you know, worked out great in my book. Or use Tamiyo to tap something that I don't want, and then, you know, go to Nahiri and go ahead and exile whatever that is. The Shamut Detested. She's a great card, but... Um, because of her lack of interaction, besides her second ability where she could deal one damage to two per up to two permanents, or just two damage to one permanent, um, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I have yet to use her plus one ability with Emrakul to end the game because, quite honestly, Emrakul does not need help to end the game. He just does it by himself. So, I might replace this Planeswalker in the near future. It just depends on how I see the meta is for the next couple days. The reason why I added these two guys, like a majority of you guys notice, the Ancient Stirrings, it does cause me to hit those Planeswalkers more often. And quite honestly, a Karn on turn 3 to exile whatever is most important to you, or your lands, that's a huge impact on the game. Because you have to basically play around that Planeswalker after that. Honestly, with this restart the game ability, I am n never planning on using that. But the ability to say, hey, you know what, let's go ahead and start this game over. Just because you know you're in a very bad position is excellent, in my opinion. So, I might decide to put more copies of these two Planeswalkers on the sideboard. Just depends, you know, like I said, how I see the games going. With Ugin, he's pretty much a board wipe. The biggest board wipe I, say, I could say, you know, that I'm playing right now. Even though, you know, he does get rid of my stuff because he doesn't play nice with anything of color. But that's also bad for your opponent, just as it's bad for you, so that being the case, to me it's excellent. Now I just have to work on my timing with using this card. So far I've had plenty of luck with it though, so I might go ahead and add in another copy. It just depends. But, like you guys can see, it deals 3 damage to any target, then it exiles everything with converted mana cost X or less. And he comes in with 7 loyalty points, which means that everything with 7 mana cost that's one or more colors is exiled. So that's, you know, wiping the board of almost everything. Especially the fact that, you know, you don't see that many high cost cards in modern that are multiple colors. That are played on a regular basis. Unless you're playing something like Control, where, you know, they're controlling the tempo of the game, so they can almost play whatever card they want. But this guy's negative 10 ability, which I have used on a couple of occasions. Let you gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, and then put seven per up to 7 permanents into play. The reason why that's great is... I play a lot of Planeswalkers, and if I'm hitting this guy's ultimate ability, it means that I have doubling season out the majority of the time. Even though, you know, the fact that he adds two to himself and he starts out at seven means that in three turns he's going to ultimate anyways if you protect him or if he doesn't get taken care of by the opponent so because that's the case i'm probably going to be hitting a doubling season and then i'm going to be hitting another planeswalker and since i'm going to be hitting a planeswalker you know that's pretty much going to end the game for the most part especially you know if it's nickel bolus dragon god which then means that I can turn around and do his ability again. Or just use Dragon God's negative 8 ability. And if they do not control a legendary creature or Planeswalker, they lose the game. To me, that's a win-win. Granted though, what I do notice with this deck is I am playing a lot for the ultimate abilities of Planeswalkers. Except for this guy. And, you know, the ability to exile whatever you want, I feel that completely explains why this guy is so relevant. But, so far, that's it. That's 
been the major changes that I've made and the thoughts that I have going forward. Hey, the Liliana the Veil though, I absolutely love that card. The only downside I would have to playing more copies of her is the fact that if I don't get doubling season, she's extremely vulnerable because she comes out at only three loyalty points. But on the flip side, on turn four, I would be able to more consistently cast her. The, the downside to that though is I would be able, I would need black mana. So, you know, it's up in the air right now. It just quite honestly depends on how the games I'm playing in the near future go. But I will be playing a decent amount of games today, so I should have some feedback by the end of the day and hopefully I will be able to upload another video and just let you guys know how the deck is doing. Alright, so on here, you know, you guys can go ahead and take a look at the sideboard. The main thing that I have added that I absolutely love, which, you know, I was going through looking at my planeswalkers and I saw this card again, is this Nicol Bolas. The reason why this planeswalker is so amazing is the fact that it's almost like a mirror image of Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Like Ugin can deal damage to target permanent and then exile, you know, everything with converted mana cost X or less. But Ugin's negative 10 ability, which lets you gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, and puts up to 7 permanents into play. Nicole Bolas has almost like the complete opposite ability for your opponent. So they take 7 damage, discard 7 cards, and then sacrifice 7 permanents. Which, you know in modern, if you had to do that at any one point in time in the game, you've pretty much lost. Other things that he does is he gains control of target creature, which, depending on what your opponent is playing, could be an excellent thing to use. But the main thing that he does, he destroys target non-creature permanent, which means that lands are open to be targeted, artifacts, enchantments, and anything else of the sort can be destroyed by this guy. So, he's an amazing addition to the deck. The only downside to him though is the fact that he cost 8 mana and you need 4 mana of different colors. Well, 2 blue, I mean 1 blue, 1 red, and 2 black. But with Interplanar Beacon, if you have two of those in play, and you know, Tron or whatever, you're able to cast this guy no problem. So, that's still good. I'm not sure if last time I had this Guruk in there or not, but I love playing this guy. The only downside is I don't run enough creatures for him to be super relevant main deck. But the fact that he could destroy creatures or planeswalkers or create, you know, 3-3 beast tokens that defend you is amazing. This Sandra right here, Flame Caller. I have won countless games with her just because of the fact that, you know, she can hit the board and basically board wipe everything that is... Usually I do a three, three or less. So anything with three defense, she's going to board wipe. Then after that, you could discard all the cards in your hand and draw that many cards. So if you're, you know, you have a hand that's not great, you could just get rid of it and get another one. Or you could start swinging at your opponents with two, three ones. And if you have doubling season out while you have her on, or while you get her into play, she's gonna come in with eight loyalty points, so you could deal up to seven damage to. Well, up to 8 damage to all the creatures in play. Or, you know, you could deal 7 damage to each creature in play. And then, next turn, you could start swinging with 4, 3, 1 ele red, elemental, and red elemental creature tokens. Man, I can't talk this morning. 
But yeah, so those are a couple of additions I've noticed with the deck. And you know, I'm quite honestly enjoying right now. I realized this mana curve thing this morning. And you know, just a pie chart showing you how much of what kind of cards I have in the deck. The zero cost. Mm, there are there are a couple zero cost cards out there that you know could be considered in this deck. But for right now, Mishra's Bobble is the main one that I've tried because with it you are able to tap it, sacrifice it, look at the top card of target player's library, so either yours or your opponent. The downside to that though is you are not able to draw the card the same turn. And since you are not able to use that card with you know the modern format and the fact that you know we're not playing counter spells or something of that nature, it doesn't really benefit us that much. So that being the case, it ends up getting in the way because late game when we want to draw a planeswalker card to win the game, if we end up with a Mishra's Bobble, then you know we've pretty much lost the game. So those are the new things that I've you know thought about and came up with with this deck. I absolutely love the feedback that you guys have given me and I look forward to getting some more. And thank you guys again for you know taking the time out to you know look at my deck idea, give me your feedback and wanting to see me be successful and you know enjoy playing Magic the Gathering. Now a deck that I have played against recently that I absolutely enjoyed was Hammer Time. So the reason why I love this deck is you know first off it was somebody's idea who sat down and you know just saw it and they were like you know what I should be able to make this deck work so I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna make it about a one cost card that adds plus 10 plus 10 and whatever is equipped with it loses flying but on turn two or three if you see a creature with you know this equipment swinging at you you almost want to just scoop and just say you know good game but at the same time it's so funny because just the fact that somebody sat around and made a deck about this card to me is absolutely amazing but yeah I've played against this deck and I absolutely loved it I mean I absolutely enjoyed it just the fact that you know somebody actually sat around and came up with this deck idea but if you guys have not checked this deck out, I'd recommend you check it out because it's amazing. I know for me, I might play this deck a couple of times just to see some of the different vulnerabilities in the deck. And because of that, you know, just if I I feel like if I know what my opponent is doing, then I know what I need to do. And for me, I'm just trying to get it to be the complete opposite for them. I want them not to be able to know what I'm doing. That way they have to, you know, try to play to the best of their ability. And if they're trying to play to the best of their ability, and I know what they're playing, I can make a pretty educated guess on what they're doing. It's kind of like how, you know, you play chess, if there are any chess players in the community. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update as to what I'm doing and hopefully by the end of the day I will somehow I will have some, you know, valuable feedback to give you guys because I do plan to be playtesting the d this deck how it is quite a decent amount today and you know, even looking at the deck it makes me want to add more things in like this Jace the Cunning Castaway because if he ultimates, you're able to create two of him, and then they're not legendary. So basically, you know, it's, you pretty much can get infinite Jaces, and then you make infinite blue illusion creature tokens. But like you guys know, even if you have an infinite number of creatures on the board, 
and an infinite number of planeswalkers, it doesn't mean you win the game. So, you know, I'm debating. I'm sure there'll be occasions where I use them, but even looking at this deck, it just there's so much possibility of things that could happen. But if you guys think of anything that you want to see me do with the deck or want to see me add to the deck, please just go ahead and, you know, drop a comment. I promise you I respond to every comment and there have been like three or four people that have given me some very valuable feedback on this deck. So to you guys out there, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Thank you all for wanting to see me be successful. And until next time, I hope you guys keep enjoying Modern and keep enjoying Magic.